Good morning to all of you that are signed in this morning for this message and this service. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, I just commend the word that will be shared today, oh God, that you would sanctify that word and that you would bless that word that it may bring forth the fruit that you intended it to have. This I ask, this I pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. I want to talk a little bit about our salvation this morning. And so the message is a simple message, but it may not be simple to some of you. So in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, starting with verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, We speak what we know, and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son, for God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. You know, this morning when the Lord um, started sharing with, with, uh, with me in my spirit uh, what he wanted me to share with you all today on, regarding salvation, but God wanted me to share the, the salvation that he gave me. That salvation is what I share. And so Nicodemus here in uh, verse one, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. This Pharisees, it was a it was a Jewish sect, and it was considered uh what we would consider very orthodox, and they were very legalistic when they came to the law of Moses. They were a political group, but they were a religious political group. And so they they believe in stoning you. They 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 believe in practicing the law of Moses in a political arena. So when this person came to Jesus, the Bible wanted us to know who he was, even though Christianity doesn't understand what it's saying in verse one. There was a man of the Pharisees. They didn't just say there was a guy named Nicodemus. No, they're telling you who and what Nicodemus was and, and, and what he represented. He represented the highest religious sect of his day. 
when it come to the Jewish faith. And he came to Jesus by night and said to him, so he wanted you to know he didn't come to Jesus. He came to Jesus by night. I don't want anyone to know that I'm talking to this person named Jesus. And he said to him, no one could do what you are doing unless God is with you. So he, he had a question. How is God is with you and you are not in our set. You're not a part of us. Uh, I don't see you at our meetings. I don't see you, you, you didn't come out of our seminary. And so he says, Jesus answered him in verse three. And he says, I'm talking to you, Pharisee, leader of the Jews, unless you, See, he ain't say he's not talking to someone else. He said, unless you are born again. Unless someone like you. So who's the one he's talking to? Nicodemus. He says, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Because Nicodemus was saved and he could see the kingdom of Israel. See, see, this is what you have in our generations of Messianic Jews and all of these Christians that want to make a pilgrimage to a kingdom in the Middle East. They want to see not the kingdom of God, but they want to see Israel. They want to see where the Lord walked, what streets he was on. And some people even would say that's part of their salvation. So with the Muslims, they have a law that at least once in their lifetime, they have to get to Mecca. <laughs> you know, that's part of their salvation. So Christians have that too. They want to go to a kingdom that it's impossible to go to. Why? Because Jesus said to him, unless you are born, he didn't say unless you were saved. See, he doesn't use the word save here. He said, unless you are born again, he says, you cannot. So all these people that are saved, Christians, Jewish people, Muslims, there are people walking around with salvation. And you can't, you can't, you can't convince them they're not saved. But they're not born again. So I have a, a lot of friends that are saved, but they've never been born again. So this man is already saved. But truly, truly, I say unto you, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, I need not say anything further that that word see means perceive understand so the gospel that i preach is not a salvation message but it's a born again it's a birth it's it's it's, it's a growing process so that once a person is born i start feeding that child milk and then when they mature enough, I start giving them the meat of the word of God. So when I go to minister to people, I'm I, some people are saved. Some people are born again. And of the born again group, some people are babes. Some people are teenagers. And then you have the mature. So the message that I have is not for people that are saved <laughs> because I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm not sent for them. I'm not a minister. So, but, but, but the saved ministers, they have to say this. No one can do what you're doing, prophet Earn, <laughs> unless God is with him. What is prophet Earn doing? Prophet Earn is helping people to grow. I'm not helping you to be saved. I'm helping you to grow. 
I am here for you to grow up. So when you look in the writings of Paul and the other apostles, it is say God gave apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teaching for the growing up of the saints, the maturing, the perfect, that word perfect means grow up. And you have churches where the minister himself has not grown up. And so, and he can't, he can't help the other people grow up in this thing because he's not grown himself. And so Paul writing to the Corinthians, the Galatians, and the other churches was grow up. Stop being a child. But he can only give that message to people that were not saved, but born again. So it's a message for born again people. And so he says, verse four, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? I wanna, I wanna take this verse and open it up because born again to Nicodemus was coming out of someone's womb. He says, how can a man be born when he's old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb. Listen to what Nicodemus says. He listened to what Jesus said. He replied to what Jesus said. He says, how can a man, how can a man, watch this, when he is old? And that's the problem. How do you convince an old person they have to start from the sperm to come back all the way up? He said, how can that be? Do you go back into a womb? And you, do you enter into your mother's womb? And Jesus replied to him, truly, truly, I said unto you, unless you're born of water and born of the spirit. But you don't know Jesus is answering the question concerning the womb. You don't know that Jesus is telling you, unless that person comes out of the womb of the Holy Ghost and the womb of himself, you can't, you can't enter the kingdom of God. In other words, the person that must birth you so I'm, I'm going to come back to this point, but I, I want to put emphasis in John chapter one, the gospel of John chapter one. Here, the writer John wants us to know something. He says, verse nine, remember now, because Jesus said, and we read that he was the true light in John three, he's the light. So where's that light reference? It's referenced in the first chapter of John because we're talking about born again. We're not talking about salvation. So J John 1, starting with, with verse 14. I'm sorry, verse 9, verse 9, starting with verse 9. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. So he came stop to his right own. there, stop right there, stop right there. So hold your hand here. Go back to John chapter three, where we was 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 reason, reading. And remember now, it says that he was sent into the world. Verse twenty. I mean, verse nineteen and twenty. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because so, their deeds were evil. So the light has come into the world. So, but but what world? It tells you the light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light. But wait a minute. We just read that he made the world. <laughs> so unbeknown to you, he made a world of darkness. He made the world of darkness. So that one day he will come into the world of darkness and be the light. He didn't make a world of light. He made a world of darkness. And so back to John 1, verse 9. So listen to what the writer here is trying to tell you. Go ahead. 
That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He so came to in, his own. In, so his... Hold on, hold on. So in the world of darkness that he created, he didn't create a world of light. He created the world of darkness, and he put lights in that world. The sun to rule the day, the moon to rule the night. He even had a light for the day. <laughs> Why do you need a light for light? Because the day is light. So on the side of light, he put a greater light, the, the shine and the light. On the shine, on the light, on the, on the darkness itself is light. Because darkness without the presence of light, you cannot move through. It's solid. So in the day side, he made the moon and the stars. So he made light that was called day. He made another light that was called darkness. And then he put lights in the day and he put lights in the darkness. But he, it was the true light. He didn't want to shine the light of a, in the day because there was already a light to rule the day. He wanted to shine the light in our darkness. And that darkness is in us, not around us. So we will walk in darkness. But unbeknown to us, we were full of darkness the day we was created. So he, the world did not recognize him. Continue to read. What? It gets better. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. So he came to his own. The reason his own could not receive him, because they were also in darkness. And they all were full of darkness. That's why they had to bring sacrifices for their sin. They None of them had been born again. He only sent them savers, people that would save them. Save them from their enemies, save them. Uh, but he would send these savers so they could be saved, but none of them had ever been born again. So even though they were saved, they were walking around with darkness in them. And they thought by doing religious deeds, it made them righteous. But they had never been born again. So they had to practice uh, sacrifice every year. Every year. So their salvation was, I had to be saved every day. But when you're born again, you're only born again once. <laughs> then you start growing in your salvation that God saved you. So when I, when I get to the other verses, I, it's going to have a different meaning than whatever you ever heard. Continue to read who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So no matter whether you was a, a Jew, so we got people that they, we got Jews calling themselves all kind of types of Jews, Orthodox Jews, unorthodox Jews, uh, uh, Messianic Jews, you got every type. In other words, you take the word Jew and you put an adjective in front of it. What you're saying is, I'm not born again. <laughs> I'm a part of a religious sect. I'm a part like a Pharisee. You are a Pharisee, a Sadducee. You belong, you are Republican, you are Democrat, but are you born again? So those who were born not by blood, I don't care if you are descendant of Abraham. I don't care if you are descendant of Isaac. In other words, you born a Jew. Are you, you, you from one of the tribes, Benjamin, Issachar, uh, 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 Reuben, uh, Simeon, Levi, uh, Dan, uh, you are part of a, a somebody. You have blood in you to say that I am a, 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 a original official Hebrew or, or Jew or Israelite. He said, no, you must be born again. I don't care. I don't care if it's the born of the blood the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. So you have some people like we had Sammy Davis Jr., Jr., Sammy Davis Jr., who wanted to be a Jew. So he converted to Judaism. 
And he said, see, no, the only thing here it says, you must be born of God. And so I've run into all of these people to tell me they're the original Hebrew, but, but, but they've never been born again. They are saved by what they believe in. And, then, and so Jesus said in John 3, we don't come into the judgment. Why? Because the born again person doesn't come into judgment. That's also right here in the gospel of John. But let me continue my thought here. Verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So salvation, no one has hold on. The salvation came through Moses, but born again came through Jesus. See, see, the law was salvation. It saved the Hebrews. <laughs> it made them the nation of Israel. And so the Pharisee that came to Jesus by night was an Israelite. He was from the nation of Israel, but from the sect of Jews, because salvation, Jesus told the woman at the well, salvation comes from the Jews, but born again comes from him. <laughs> See, salvation is not born again. Jesus is the beginning of a born, he walked around with the seeds that would come into your heart being the womb. And so what we have is people who are saved. So I have saved people in my church. But the saved people are not growing. They need the law. The law says, don't do this. Don't do that. Saved people grow out of sin. Because the darkness is defeated inside them. Out of the heart proceed adultery fornication, lying, stealing, lust, jealousy, or hate. All of this gets conquered as they're growing. So when a person is born again and growing from the inside, they go from faith to faith to glory to glory. So he was in the world. The world was made by him, we said here. So I want to then go all the way to the book of Genesis chapter 2. Let's look at the world that the Lord God made that he put man in. So he puts man in the world of darkness that needs lights. How do we know the world was darkness? He, had a, he needed a light to rule the day, and he needed lights at night. And man would see, well, unbeknown to man, he needed a light even in day, because even the light of his world was darkness. It was not the true light, the light of every man that come into the world. Genesis chapter two. Genesis two and verse, verse, um, verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. And that word naked there has nothing to do with clothes. That word naked, naked there is a Hebrew word for subtle. And, it, and that word is the plural, meaning two people that are subtle. So God create a subtle person. But then out of the subtle person, he took a subtle part of them. So the two subtle are really one subtle. And every time a man joins to a woman to make a child, they make that child subtle. 
In other words, it's a subtle, it's a child of darkness. So here, the translator don't want you to know that man was created in darkness. See, the translator didn't translate the word naked into subtle. Why? Because even the translator cannot handle the truth of himself. Subtle, come on, you can say it. Well, it's... Uh, subtlety uh, denotes being cunning, uh, sly, manipulative. Those are the kinds of words that uh, subdue, uh, when you're subtle means. And so a man will leave his father and mother and with him and his wife, they will live a life of subtlety. They will join together as one. So the very next verse, chapter three, verse one is, remember in the original, there's no breaks. It's just constant reading. There's no chapters. There's no verses. It's just straight reading. So right after it says, the, the man and his wife was subtle and they had no shame to their subtlety <laughs> because God created that natural for them that from within them, they would hate, they would kill. He created them that way because he knew there was a day coming when he was gonna go inside of them and light up their world. But that was not the day. And he wanted to prove to them who they were. So he put them in a garden to show them everything they could touch. And he wanted to show them they will come up with a way of touching that which was forbidden. In other words, they were justified to themselves why they could do it. And so in verse one of chapter three, go ahead. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the and Lord that word God had made. Cunning and crafty is the same word for nakedness, but it's singular. It says, he would have to separate the two. God made something that would separate and come between the two of them, break them up. He created him for the purpose of breaking them up. He lets you know. He said, then a serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Unbeknown to you, man is a beast. And so, there, and so it told you that in chapter two. Then when man fall, God tells them, you're going back to the earth because you was a beast that I put in the garden. I only put you in the garden to show you, you had need of light and you had need of being, are you ready for this? Born again, not saved. Because with everyone that was saved, you need to bring a sacrifice when you sin. <laughs> because you can't stop sinning. Why? Because you was created as a sinner. You was born a sinner. When God created you, he created you from the dirt. You was dirty from birth. Why? Man, look in chapter 2. Chapter 2. Then it says, do, 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 do. chapter two, verses six. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed so what, into his nostrils. So God formed you and I from dirt. Look at us. You was never clean. <laughs> You was never clean, never. So because you are in this, this, this temple of sin, Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who can deliver me from the castle? My body is my castle of sin in this castle dwelleth no good. Every member is dirt. <laughs> and so salvation 
can't stop you from sinning. So you need a sacrifice. It don't care who family you come out of. It don't care if you was born from this person, this blood. It don't mean it, 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 it doesn't matter. So you have the United Nations here in America where men go and they argue all day. There's not a day those men meet where they can't find peace. Why? They come in with their vessels. And they're already full of hate. So right now when I'm talking to you, over about 50 wars are being fought by grown men who never grew up. They sit at the conference table and they hate each other and they don't even know. They don't even know each other. They walked in the conference hating. Why? They brought hate with them. And so it says, continue to read. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So God breathed into man something contrary to what was man himself. He put his breath in a vessel of sin. And so Paul said, I find a war in my members. <laughs> I find my spirit warring against my flesh. The good, because the spirit knows what is good. It comes out of God. Your conscience knows right from wrong. You can't say you didn't know right from wrong. Your own conscience tells you. Why? Because the breath of God brings the revelation that there's light. The breath of God knows there's going to be a judgment. So the breath tells the flesh, don't do that. So your conscience condemn you. So it says in Romans 2, you don't have to go there. When the Gentiles who don't have the law do the law, they are a law to themselves. Their conscience, so watch this. God is, he's the one that put the light. The, the conscience is the light, the light of every man that comes in the world. Every soul ever born is born with a conscience. That's the light. That light, when it's on, tells you that's right and that's wrong. But once your conscience is seared with a hot iron, there is no right and there is no wrong. You just walk around and you don't have no discernment between right or wrong. It's whatever you claim it to be and you do whatever you want to do. So even the Jews and the Hebrews, they did whatever they thought was right in their own sight. Then when God came, they says, we don't want you to be our judge, nor do you want we want you to be our king. See, they had something inside them called sin. And sin says to God, so when he placed them in his garden, they went in that garden as sinners. So he told those sinners, the day you find out the truth about yourself, you're going to die. Why? You're going to have to live knowing there you're an animal. You're nasty. You're evil. You got people who call themselves falling in love. But do you know the divorce rate is 50%? One out of every two people were divorced. Do you know that is true in the church and out the church? Do you have any idea how many pastors in America last year divorced their wife? These are pastors with the word of God. Notice, don't look like they were born again. Don't look like if they were born again, they grew up. Why did they divorce? Flesh. Not spirit flesh. So when I'm ministering to re the members of my church, Redemption Ministry, I'm ministering a message of maturity because God gave me as a gift to the body to help them grow up. I don't, I, 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 I'm not here with a law. I, my church is not a church of law. It's a church of grace. 
But there is a law in grace that you can't practice certain things in my ministry. Because everyone that is born of God does not practice certain things. It doesn't mean that they're not working out their salvation with fear and trembling. They're working it out because it's something inside they have to work out. They're working something out so that the one inside them may grow. Continue to read. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out so of the God, ground, the so so God takes man out of the world that he's in, and he puts him in a garden that's in Eden. And in other words, that man is going to have an God is going to feed something contrary to his nature. He's going to give him food that not natural food. He's going to give him the bread of heaven. The same thing he did to children of Israel. He gave them manna. And Jesus said, look, even that bread, your fathers died. But if anybody eat the bread that I shall give, which is my flesh, he said, he shall never die. But who wants to eat? So he says, and let you eat my flesh and drink my blood. You don't have eternal life. You walking around waiting for the judgment the last day to see whether or not you can get in. But if you're born again and growing, you will not come into judgment, he told him. Why? Because you are working out the things in your life. and You're growing up. You're maturing. Do you, know, do, you need, do you need me to tell you don't commit fornication? Do you need me to actually really tell you stop stealing? See, no, 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 no. Your conscience can tell you that. <laughs> I'm not here to tell you something as basic as that. I'm here to tell you how to grow. So I don't like babysitting members of my church. I let them die. I let them fall off. Why do I let them do that? Because my sheep know my voice. <laughs> that, see, that's what Jesus said. So he took a whole group of people out in the wilderness, and he says, unless you eat my flesh, and drink my blood, you have no life. And it says, many, many followed him no more. They didn't want that type of experience. They wanted to remain evil, nasty, I can't, unforgiveful. They can't forgive. No, no matter how good you are to them, they, they will remember now because they are either babes or they just saved they can't get over the smallest offense. They cannot grow up. And so you are constantly babysitting them. But I don't believe in babysitting. I believe in keep walking and that which fall away will fall away. I'm willing to lose anyone because Jesus took them in the wilderness to show them that what was in them. He didn't take them there to show them what was in the wilderness. He used everything in the wilderness to show them themselves, how they murmured, how they complained. So he swore they will never enter into rest. You cannot enter into rest if you haven't been born again. You will complain about anything and everything because in you is a complaining nature. In you, you're mean. You're evil. So you can be married, in love with the person. I guarantee you, you will find something about them that you don't like. Is it sin? No, it ain't sin. You just don't like it. And so it provoked you. It provoked you. You put up with it because you, you, you had a motive at first to be with that person. But once that motive is is, is materialized, it happens, you're with them. You, you had your sex, you whatever. Now you can tell them the truth. So you start demanding, I need you to stop doing that. I don't like what you said. Well, why didn't you tell me that in the beginning? Well, I had a motive. And now I don't need it, why? Because I didn't conquer it. 
That's Christianity. It only needs Jesus for a motive. A job. I'm sick. A husband. A promotion. You need religion. But Christ ain't come to give us religion. He told him, tear down your church. Christ came to live in you and for you to live in him. And in order for that to happen, you must be born again. So back to the book of John chapter three. Yeah, I told you this was a simple message, but it wasn't gonna be that simple. John three verses five. Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Go ahead, marvel that. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. See, the wind blows hold on, where hold it wishes. On. Do, do not marvel. He's talking to a man that's a saved man, and he is a teacher in Israel. He's of the highest sect of religion on the earth of that day. He's a Pharisee. He's teaching the law of Moses from the dot of the eye and the cross of the teeth. See, you're going to lose the fact verse 1 tells you he's a Pharisee. Then Jesus said, are you not a teacher? And you don't realize? In other words, Jesus is saying, don't you know you're evil? <laughs> don't you know you're nasty for so he's saying to Nicodemus Nicodemus do I have to tell you how nasty and evil you are and you're a teacher in Israel that do I have to tell you that no matter how many sacrifices you take to the temple now because Nicodemus took sacrifice to the temple he's a Pharisee dude you still was angry at the person even after you killed the animal do you know it never took away your hate for the Sadducees, because a Pharisee did not get along with the Sadducees. So in their religion, the Baptist is mad at the Catholics. In Ireland, they got the Protestants fighting the Catholics right there. <laughs> you, get, you, you, get, you get the Arabs fighting the Jews, and they say they're brothers. Some say I'm from Ishmael, and others say I'm from Isaac. Do you know they were brothers? Do you know Cain killed Abel because of what was in him? And so you should know by now what's in you. You should know when you see a person walk past you, what you do not, you like them or you don't. You got people that don't like people just because of the color of their skin and they in the same church. You got people in families where somebody is the darkest one in the family and everybody that is lighter than them call him darky. They give him a name, hey darky. <laughs> they, 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 they label him at birth and they say we don't want you with us and then this is the same they had the same father and the same mother Cain and Abel Isaac Ishmael Jacob Esau so the Lord said don't you see aren't you getting the message religion doesn't mature you you don't grow up in religion. Religion make you hate the opposite person in another religion. <laughs> religion killed Jesus. It was a high priest that says, we don't want light in our darkness. Why? As the priest of my temple, let me preach my darkness. And so it said Moses had a light. But when Christ came, Moses' light turned to darkness, Paul said. He said, my God, with all that glory that people could not look in the face of Moses, Jesus came along and now Moses can't look at Christ. What a revelation, Paul. So here it says in verse 3, verily, verily, I say unto thee. Now he's not talking about being born again now. He's talking about being born into. Unless you are born of the spirit, 
and you're born of the water, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Look in the book of Job 15, verse 14. The book, book of Job, some of you, it's called Job. But in that book, verse 14 of chapter 15. What is man that he could be pure? And he who was born of a woman that he could be righteous? Go ahead. If God puts no... If God puts no trust in his saints, and the heavens are not pure in his sight, how much less man, who is abominable and filthy, who drinks iniquity like water? So I the, will tell you... Oh, hold on, hold on. He's saying God doesn't even consider the heavens to be clean. God doesn't even consider those things we call holy in the heavens to be clean. I don't think you heard that one. The, God said, I don't care who's in heaven. It ain't clean. Not next to him. That is frightening. Those the, notice that he says holy ones. Those are the holy ones that he says are not clean. That ain't even man. <laughs> God said, Don't you understand? Everything is created in darkness. Even the holy ones are darkness to God, he said. What the, you say what? Notice, I people go say, Prophet Aaron said that. No, no, no. Let's read that again. Verse 14. What is man that he could be pure? And he who is born of a woman that he could be righteous? Stop right if there. God... Stop right there. Stop right there. So I showed you in Genesis and I showed you in the Gospel of John that all mankind was created evil. The Man don't want to believe that. Man want to believe that he's made in the image and likeness of God. <laughs> now, but God told him, don't eat of the tree that would make him think he was like God. See the contradiction here? God, the tree made man think he was like God. <laughs> so to this day, man thinks he's like God. When, but he's walking around with dirt. <laughs> And he and, and he says, I'm like God. No, you're not. You will go back to the earth that you came out, God told him. You're not. He said, the moment you think you're like me, you're going to die. Why? Because you're going to keep trying to be right like me. And it's not your nature. It's impossible for you to be like me. So Jesus told Nicodemus, you should know that by now. You must be born again to be like me. No church, no religion that you believe in, Baptist, Methodist, even the Pentecostal doctrine, none of that can make you like me. So he says, search the scriptures, go to your religious books, go to the writings of your prophets. You think you have life from the prophets, but you won't come to me. They spoke of me. I'm the one you come to. Not the church. Not of blood. Not of the will of man. Not of the will of flesh. You come to me so you can be not saved, he said, that you may be born again. That's my gospel. And so I offend all the religious people in my church, the people I walk around, they hate my gospel. So they're like the high priest. They want to take me before Punch's palace. <laughs> and they say, this man is making, he is preaching another God. <laughs> He's not preaching the God of flesh. He's preaching the invisible one. The one that does not come with observation the one that should be in you where the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of Israel, not the kingdom of America or England or Russia or China. No, the kingdom of God comes not with observation. It should be in you. And so Jesus came to get in us so he could build up the kingdom of God. Continue here in Job. 
If God puts no trust in his saints and the hold heavens on, are not pure. That word there is not saints, it's the holy ones. If God put no trust in those that are holy in the heavens, the holy ones, the, the, they're called the entities of light. He says, even these entities of light are darkness. So in Genesis 1, he said, let there be lights in the darkness. And let them rule over night and day. But all of those lights were lights of darkness. Everyone, but they were lights. So there is a glory, it says, in the reading of the writings of Moses. Because he had a glory, but that glory fades away with the true light when it shows up. Because these are artificial lights. They're not the light that came into the world that when men sat in darkness. Moses was a light sent to the Hebrews. He wasn't even sent to the world. God never sent the Jews to the world. He, he made a boundary and he told them, stay in your land. He told them, I don't even want you to marry them other people. And I don't want them marrying you. Look at you made from dust. Continue. And the heavens are not pure in his sight. Wait How a much minute, less the man. heavens? Did you say the heaven? Did you say the heavens themselves? With all that glory and nep, 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 nebulas and, and stars, huge stars of light, burning flames of light. He said, they all dirty. He said, every one of them are dirty. In other words, it's like having a light bulb that you don't know it got dirt all on it. <laughs> you, and so continue. How much less man who is abominable and filthy, who drinks iniquity like water. He says man drinks up iniquity like his water. It's like me just taking this cup here. And what are you doing? I'm drinking iniquity. I'm iniquity. Mm, it's got a good taste. Mm, the pleasures of sin. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Oh, my God. My flesh loves sin. Oh, my God. I'm saved. And you know what it says? I want to sin. I've been saved for 45 years. And it says, I want to sin. I've been born again for 45 years. And it's still wars. And so Paul says, as long as I'm in this flesh, I buffer my flesh. Lest after preaching to others, I become a hypocrite in a castaway. He said, don't you know? I know the truth about me, and I'm Apostle Paul. Look why we in Job chapter 25, starting with verse 4. I'm not going to get to my message. I'm, this is the introduction, but it was a good introduction. 25 verse 4. How then can man be righteous before God, or how can he be pure who is born of a woman? If even the moon does not shine and the stars are not pure in his sight, how much less man who is a maggot and a son of man who is a worm? So you don't even realize you, your body will actually turn to worm. Did you know that? Do you know scientists know that? You don't know you're a worm. You are nothing but a worm. You're a magnet. When you start decaying, you start showing who you really was. And you stink. You know that they made something for you, toilet paper, to wipe yourself. And every day when you go to the bathroom, you smell yourself. And all the spray in the world can't hide the truth. Use a stinker. Oh, we are stinkers. I can prophesy and all I'm saying, Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and so I've been around the prophets. I've been around real apostles and prophets. And then they go, Ooh, and then they look at me and say, excuse me. <laughs> and we just laugh. Because the older you get, the harder it is to hold it. 
And so I get around all these old men of God. I travel with them and they be in the bed and I hear them go. And then they say, and I hear them laugh. <laughs> but let a young person do it. Oh, they all embarrassed. Why are you embarrassed about a poop? That's who you are. <laughs> and I, I, I'm trying to tell you, you must be born again. And all the salvation you go, I don't care what church you is, you still going to poop. <laughs> and so I get all these people to write to me. I say, do you go to the bathroom like me? They say, what do you mean? I say, do you go to the bathroom? And as soon as they say yes, I say, so you stink like me? They say, yeah. and they look at me and I say, and they say, what you getting to? I say, I'm getting to that your religion didn't close your bowel. It didn't shut your butt up. You see, it need to close your mouth because you don't know all the stinking stuff, religion coming out of your mouth, how righteous you are and, and, and what you believe and, and what you know. Because I saw your eyes lust for that girl that came into the shop too. <laughs> and I said, you know what? You got an issue on the inside. Don't look like you're keeping of your Sabbath, eating, eating the right, not eating pork can keep that horny spirit from the inside not coming out. Or your eyes betrayed you, or your hair betrayed you. Woo! Matthew 1, 21. Ah, I hope y'all enjoy this message. I do. Because the Lord gave it to me in the morning. I had all kind of, I had emergency phone calls come to me this morning and everything. And, but I had, thank God he gave me my Bible study before the call came, because after that call came, me and my wife, that's all, we, we just been talking all morning. Matthew one twenty one. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So you're going to call this person Jesus, because he's the one that's going to save you from your sin. Not your works, not your religion. The person that's going to save you and me from our sins is one person. First Timothy 2, verse 5. And why do we need just one person to do it? I'm going to show you why. T Paul told Timothy why. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. All I need is one mediator. Because as long as I'm in my flesh, I still got a problem. But I need someone to stand between me and God until I get out of this vessel of sin and, and move to the new house that has no sin in it at all. So once he moved me in it, he ain't got to tell me stop sinning because the, I, in heaven, I have a new body reserved for me. That's in Corinthians, uh, uh, Corinthians chapter five. In that chapter, Paul says, when this earthly tabernacle is dissolved. We have another body, not made of sin, reserved for another house we're going to move to where, where there's no desire to sin. There's nothing that's going to motivate you to sin when he moved you to your new house. But he wants to see why he's in your house. Do you want to move or do you want to have something in the world where you can practice sin, then bring a sacrifice and make an excuse and say, Lord, Will you cover me because I made the mistake? But you only have one mediator between God and man. That's the man. No, it didn't say to God. That is, is the man, Jesus the Christ. What a testimony. So Isaiah 9, verse 6. Pastor Nish, did you hear something? Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Continue. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice, from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The zeal. When I was talking to my wife. I have a zeal for people growing up. I don't have a zeal for religion. I left an organization that was religious. But they knew all kinds of doctrines 
but they could not get out of their flesh. They couldn't get out of their flesh. Jude 1, 3, I'm about ready to close. Jude 1, verse 3. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men, who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And so there is a tendency, and I have a lot of pastor friends that preach religion because they could not let Christ manifest himself in their flesh. So they are flesh demon pastors, but that's okay. Then Moses had a glory. I don't mess with their glory, but when I come around, their glory fades. And that's where they're intimidated. They're intimidated by the experience that I have and the gospel that I have because I preach Christ and I preach him crucified because I myself have been crucified with Christ. And the life I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the son of God who gave himself for me. So I'm asking my people to contend for that faith the faith where they grow up and stop practicing stuff that they need a law to tell them to stop doing when they already know the law. And so God saying, I don't want to write law on stones. I want to write the law of God on your heart, on your mind. And he said, now you don't have to have anyone to tell you right from wrong. Because now you will have it on the inside. So if you've been born of water, if you've been born of the spirit, if you've been born again, that means you have the you have Jesus in you. you you're now in Christ and Christ is in you. You had the Holy Ghost in you and now you're in the Holy Ghost. So Romans 6, starting with verse 1, and I'm going to close on, on these verses here. Romans 6, starting with verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So, Certainly not. So, so should we continue to keep coming to the church and hearing about a law, what we should not be doing, and you need to stop that? He said, no way in the world. Should we continue in that type of ministry and that type of church? Continue. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So he's saying, if you've been born again, there's no reason to continue to practice sin. Because grace has given you to work sin out, which means you're still sinning, but you're working it out. You're growing up. And so you're going to, when you was a child, you did like, you spoke like a child. You act like a child. But when you become a man, to still be doing childish things means you never grew up. He said, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? Do we, in other words, do you need more grace to stop sinning? No. You were saved by grace through faith. That was the gift God gave you. The gift was called grace. That saved you. You didn't get saved by law. And practice it. No, you got saved by grace through faith. That was his gift. So you, should you continue to practice sin? God forbid. Continue. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. That so the my body old of man has been crucified with him. Continue. That the body of sin might be done away with. And so we should no longer is, be slaves. The dirty man, I still walk around with him. I have to reckon myself buried with Christ and dead with Christ so that I can stop listening to myself and yielding to myself. Continue. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. 
Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Continue. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death, or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Notice he I said from the doctrine. The doctrine I give you is your deliverance. It's not a doctrine of law. I've preached the doctrine. Pastor Denise and I, we preach grace. We refuse to go into law. Because law kills. God gave the law only to the disobedient. He give grace to the obedient. And so I say to you that are listen to me today, marvel not, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Now I'm going to end this and I'm going to open it up for discussions. And that's where the fun part comes. Now, Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for the audience. I thank you for the word that you placed in my spirit this morning to give to the people here. I pray, Lord, that that word will find a place in their hearts and in their spirit and in their mind. I thank you for all of that in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. And now I open. Uh, uh, Michael, you can.